It's the 2K Sports pregame show. Greetings, everybody. Welcome to 2K Sports. I'm Ernie Johnson, and it is my pleasure to be with Shaquille O'Neal and Kenny the Jet Smith. And it is Clipper basketball tonight as the Los Angeles Clippers go up against the Minnesota Timberwolves. Looking at Minnesota, they were swept by this team last season, losing all three games they played against them. So they'll be motivated tonight. And with some time here to spare, let's talk leadership in the NBA. Kenny, who would you say are the best leaders on the floor in the league? Wow. Well, obviously, the, the great Tim Duncan in the San Antonio Spurs with his leadership with Greg Popovich. They're the top of the list. You know, I also like Kevin Durant. You know, Kevin Durant's leadership is, is probably unparalleled or underrated, I would say, for his shit, because he always has his team in position to win. There's two type of leaders, Ernie, the vocal leader and the one that leads by example. One of my favorite vocal leaders, Chris Paul. Dirk Nowitzki is not very vocal, but he leads by example. LeBron James does both. Very vocal at times, very animated. Joe Keem Noah's not bad either now yeah. for the Bulls, even though he's not the greatest of those players, but he's, he's a good leader. Yeah, but LeBron does both. What kind of a leader were you, Shaq? Uh, I was vocal. I used, to, I used to get in people's rack, Ernie. Did you? Mess around if you want to, tear the locker room up. Would you, what would you do if you had a guy like Kenny on your team? I wouldn't do anything for Kenny because Kenny would make me look good because I know for a fact if I kick it out to Kenny, he's going to knock it down. And you know, I would be the first thing I would say, if we don't get it to Shaq, I'm slapping someone. <laughs> Let's get it to Kevin Harlan <laughs> as they get ready for the opening tip. You just scared me. <laughs> We are live at the Staples Center for a Western Conference contest with the Los Angeles Clippers here in L.A. Welcome, folks, and thanks for sharing part of your weekend with us here at 2K Sports. I'm Kevin Harlan, and here with me today, Clark Kellogg and Greg Anthony. For the Timberwolves, this is the last game before heading back to Minnesota. Well, it's been an improvement this year over last season. They made a lot of Ready, adjustments gentlemen? and happy to see Ready? that they translate into some tangible results. And I think for the Timberwolves, they've looked very solid here to start the season. What's surprised me the most is just how much confidence this group is playing with. Yeah, that's exactly right, Greg. I mean, that mental toughness bodes well, very well for them once we get later into the season. And the starting lineup for the Timberwolves. Martin and Wiggins out on the perimeter. Garnett out there with Towns. And it's Rubio in a point guard. When you're talking about the greatest clutch players ever, that list needs to include Paul Pierce. I mean, he slowed down a bit, no doubt, but don't let that fool you. If you give him any kind of look at the end of the game, he'll cut your heart. And so it's the Minnesota Timberwolves getting the first points of the ball game. Reddick passes to Jordan, and he gets it to go. Rubio with it. 17 points for him last game against the Kings in Sacramento. And also defensively, he was really aggressive. I mean, matter of fact, he had four steals over the course of that game. Feeds it to Wiggins. And he sinks that one, hitting the back of the rim on the way in. Nice piece of work there. Get yourself a little space and pull the trigger. To the paint. They get a hand on it. Towns with the steal. And stolen by Reddick. Pierce with it. Guarded now by Rubio. Here's Jordan, and he jams it with authority. And guys got careless with the ball there, and the turnover leads to the big stuff. Once he came up right with the steal, he went straight on the attack. That's exactly the way to do it, too, Kevin. Go hard to the bucket, and don't let them set up the defense. Nice work to get it inside and draw the contact. Exactly. The defense determined not to allow the easy layup right there. They'll settle for making him earn the free throws. All right now, gentlemen, two shots. Two shots. The first one falls. A young team trying to find their place in the league can have it tough on the road, Clark, and the 2015 Timberwolves typify that sentiment. 
in spades. Seven yeah. and 34 mm. on the road last season. Dead last in the West as they won only three road games against the rest of the conference. And good on the second, so he makes them both. And, and with the Wolves on the road, that they shot threes better and had better offense, they would still lose by double digits on average. Now here's Paul. In the game against New Orleans, very impressive. And the shot is good. Oh, that is just weak defense there. I'm pretty sure that was not the plan to give him those kind of baskets at the hoop. Here's Towns. Five points in the game. The drive by Rubio. Garnett outside. Griffin with the steal. Now the Clippers moving it up. Reddick's got the ball. The quick look no good that time. The Clippers on defense. They trail by one. And you know, guys, for the Wolves on the road last year, it was hard because they are in the West. I mean, we've talked before about how far they have to travel as a team for their road game. Now, here's Rubio. Taking a look at the scoring numbers, right now he averages about nine points a game. Wiggins inside the line. And he overshot that one, missing. That's one he knows he should have drained. Let's catch up with Doris from the sideline. Hey, Kevin, I caught up with Coach Doc Rivers. I asked him about the player he'll try to key on in this matchup, and he had no hesitation saying Kevin Garnett. He said what makes KG special and such a problem to deal with is he can control games on both ends of the floor with his offensive and defensive skill set, saying he has so much length it makes it very difficult around both keys for us. Always great to hear from you, Doris. Clippers have gotten four of six field goal attempts to drop in the first quarter. Pierce with a wide open look and a great assist by Paul as that one goes in. Pierce has got his second basket. The Timberwolves trail. And here's Rubio looking for his first basket still in this one. Martin against Reddick. Martin with the bucket. Four or five shots have dropped for them already. Not a bad way to get things started. The Clippers have gone five of seven today so far. Nice shooting to get this game underway. Here's Griffin. And the wide open shot from Reddick. Off target from three point range. Now here's Garnett. He's coming off a 13 point game against the Kings in Sacramento. Yeah, and he also did a great job on the backboards, Kev. And, and that also was a factor. I mean, that's a tough break for the D. I mean, he took the hit and drew the whistle. Yeah, but he was late to get there, Greg, so the referee couldn't give him a free pass on that one. Martin dishes to Wiggins. Elbow shot. Shot is off. Excellent D there from Pierce. Looking at the last game for the Minnesota Timberwolves, it was a loss to the Kings. And, boy, that was a tough one to, to lose, guys, but... They played well throughout that game, just unable to convert down the stretch. Yeah, I know we don't get into moral victories, but they can definitely take away some positives from it because even though they came up on the short end, there was some good stuff, too. Stolen by Pierce. And here we go. Fast break. Paul's got it. Reddick with it, and it's Martin picking him up. That's a two from Paul. No luck. And Minnesota will come the other way. And this is the first season matchup for them against this Clippers team. Yeah, and a four-game season series between these two. Both will be looking to set the tone tonight. Yeah, and as they renew acquaintances, if you're the underdog, you always want to show, hey, we've got something new up our sleeve. It should be fun. Well, last year, DeAndre Jordan turned in another great defensive performance. In fact, first team all defense uh, announced in the NBA after last season, anchored his team as he always seems to do. And, and Jordan was a force in the middle, over two blocks a game again, and, and changed countless others with his effort. Clippers leading by three. Pierce kicks to Paul. Outside Griffin. Land soft on the front of the rim and drops. And his presence as a scorer, it just has a calming effect for the rest of the team. He's a fallback option whenever they need one. So the Timberwolves called their first timeout. And really, the last few seasons, 
the Clippers have been one of the most consistently strong teams in the league. A, a far cry from when they were a bottom feeder back in the day. They have become one of the premier franchises in the NBA. Greg, as you said about the Clippers, the days of finishing near the bottom every year are over. Clark, a lot of that is Doc Rivers. Exactly. Since 2012, Kevin, they've had the third best record in the NBA. A lot of loyal fans stuck it out with the team during the dark days, and now they're reaping the fruit. And Los Angeles will go for a different look here. Cole Aldrich, he's checked in for DeAndre Jordan. Smith comes in for Blake Griffin. Wesley Johnson's checked in for Paul Pierce. Lance Stevenson subbed in for J.J. Reddick. Now, here's Rubio. Still getting warmed up offensively. No buckets yet in the game for him. In the corner, it's Martin. Garnett outside. Shoots off the screen. Hits some rim on the way in, and the bucket's good. Terrific shot by Garnett. Boy, is he smooth. And last season, really a, a tale of two halves for the Wolves. When Ricky Rubio returned from injury, they just looked so much more in sync as a team. And the Clippers decide to take their first time out here. Well, the Wolves improved just very slightly last year in terms of wins, Clark. The quality of play on the floor, though, was visible. Yeah, and you know, the team's point differential was a lot better with Rubio in the lineup. They did have some big wins over quality teams, and Rubio's impact was certainly noticeable. Los Angeles leading by three. Over in the corner, Paul. That's good, and it's Stevenson with the assist. Paul's got five points so far. So far, so good for them at the offensive end here in the early going. He had a great field goal percentage to start exactly what they were hoping for. Towns, the pass to Garnett. To the inside, here's Wiggins, and he gets it to go. Wiggins has got his second bucket. That pass into the paint, that is a work of art there, dead on target. L.A. has gone one or two from long range in the first quarter. Stevenson right side. Off the mark there with the three-point shot. Well, they're fortunate. The defense was taking a big chance leaving him that wide open behind the arc. And it's Wiggins missing. The Los Angeles Clippers coming to this one after the win against New Orleans. And how about the game plan that was constructed for that one? I mean, it was apparent how powerless the D was to stop it. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. I mean, they just didn't have an answer for anything they threw at it. And taken away by Paul. There's 39 seconds left in the first. The pass to Smith from 11 feet away. And good as it just snugs right down through the net. Yeah, that's an easy, we call those bunnies. That's what they need. Rubio dishes to Garnett. Here's Towns. It's hauled in by Los Angeles. I'm a fan of anybody who defends that way. I mean, they weren't about to open the door and just allow him to cruise in for a layup. A shot by Paul, nobody around. And the rebound goes to Martin. With one on the clock. He got it up that time, but it wouldn't fall for him. And that does it for the first quarter. Los Angeles on top, up six. And a chance to hear from DeAndre Jordan, who talks about the inspiration he drew from head coach Doc Rivers. A strong case can be made that Jordan played like the defensive player of the year, Clark, this past season. And the fact that he didn't win it looks like it'll keep him motivated. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, I love the passion he plays with defensively. It seems like a burning fire in him. And Doc has stoked that fire with desire and inspiration. I, you've got to love how the passion to play defense burns in DeAndre. Now the second quarter getting ready to start up. And before we move on, what do you guys think about what we've seen so far from the Clippers? I, I just think that from an intensity standpoint, their defense has really been the key. It's been the catalyst as they've been able to disrupt 
their opponent's offense. Absolutely. I mean, they've been much more intense defensively. And their defense not only has been intense, but it's been swarming and saran wrap-like. All fueled up and ready to go. Let's reset the lineups courtesy of Gatorade as the second quarter gets going. Taking a look at Los Angeles, Chris Paul and J.J. Redick are the guards. Inside, it's Griffin and Jordan, and it's Smith in at the three, the small forward. Here's Paul after the made shot from Carl Anthony Towns. And it's Jordan with the jam. Maybe could have tried for a more memorable dunk than that. And we know he's capable of those memorable dunks. Yeah, and, and when he's got a lead like that, why not take a few chances? A lot more engaging and entertaining than just doing the old ho-hum one-handed. Very strong start to the career last year of Andrew Wiggins out of Kansas. Just one year with the GX came out strong early on and, and Clarkie never slowed down yeah found his stride early and just kept strutting his stuff right to the tune of rookie of the year here's Towns following the score by Josh Smith the pass to Jordan Reddick for three it's rebounded by Towns Timberwolves trail by eight Rubio outside, jacks up a three. Offensive rebound, goes back up, and Towns gets it to go. Just lazy defense on the glass there. Well, nobody boxed out. Nobody put a body on anybody else. Things like that not only drive the coach crazy, that stuff gets under my skin. Last season, the Clippers came away with the third seed out west. They were very tough in conference and managed to get 37 of their 56 wins against Western Conference teams. And the Clippers call time here. As you said, for the Clippers, 37 wins last year against the rest of the West. That total was the second most against the rest of the West among any team in the league. Uh, trailed only Golden State in that regard. And, and you know what? They played the top West teams tough as well. One of only three Western Conference teams to be over 500 against the rest of the playoff teams from the West. Paul Pierce has checked in for the Clippers. Second quarter of play with around two minutes gone so far. Ball against Rubio. Floats a runner. That misses off the backboard. Timberwolves trail by six. Towns kicks to Wiggins. No good on the triple. Just not much success when it comes to shooting. And it's Paul penetrating. Reddick for three. Minnesota with the rebound. They'll be hosting Orlando for the next one. And that game will kick off a four-game homestand. Three-pointer. Martin. And good on the basket. Book it. And now just a three-point clipper lead. You know what, guys? He can really light it up from the perimeter at times. Paul kicks to Reddick. And a great assist by Paul as that one goes in. Paul's got six assists in the game. Minnesota's gone one of four from three-point range in the second. Not a whole lot dropping out there for them. Jang, a screen. Pierce against Wiggins. Rubio in the corner. Nice ball movement by Minnesota. Six on the shot clock, and Tang gets it to go. Terrific assist that time by Rubio. Clippers leading by four. Oh, and there's the alley-oop. And it goes out of bounds. Uh, last touch by Paul. Well, when you think of the great playmakers in league history, John Stockton per game averaged double-digit dimes. Think of this. For his career, 15,806 career assists. A record you knew right off would stand for a very long time. And, guys, you know, you look up point guard in the dictionary, and there's a nice little picture of John Stockton there. I mean, he is an unreal distributor. Control the game like no one ever has before or, or since. It's no coincidence that Utah never missed the playoffs in any of the 19 seasons that John Stockton was at the helm. Clippers have gone four of seven from the field in this second quarter so far. Griffin against Jang. Pass to Redick for the three. Rebound by Dang. And Coach Doc Rivers wears multiple hats 
for this organization. Not only is he the head coach, but also in charge of all basketball operations. Really the leader in a lot of ways for this team. A three-pointer, Wiggins, and he gets it to go. Wiggins has got seven. And, and that's good stuff from him. Nice touch. Here's Reddick. He's coming off a 16-point game against New Orleans. The defense there got away with a major lapse. Wiggins passes to Dang. Outside, Martin. And another three for Minnesota. Clark, a lot of give and take between these sides early. Kevin, how about six lead changes in this half already? Yeah, and both teams look like they came to play. We should have a good one. Now here's Griffin. He picked up 18 points in the last one against New Orleans. And Rubio kicks to Martin. And yes, sir, that one drops. Now it's a four-point Timberwolves lead. Pretty much all of their buckets coming from inside the paint now. That's right. Five of their last six makes were on the interior. They've established their inside presence. That's how to orchestrate for your teammate. Terrific pass. And the Timberwolves call time here. Chris Paul, guys, for the last decade, the best point guard in the NBA. Now, there's some new competition for that distinction, though, with, with Steph Curry breaking through to NBA stardom. And, and it's always exciting to watch these two go head to head. How would you compare Chris Paul and Steph Curry? Well, Steph Curry is just an off-the-chart shooter. I think the best in the history of the game in overall shot-making and creativity as far as shooting goes. Paul is more of an orchestrator, a maestro supreme. A different look for the Clippers. Cole Aldrich, he's checked in for DeAndre Jordan. Johnson comes in for Paul Pierce. And Lance Stevenson subbed in for J.J. Redick. And a change for the Timberwolves. Kevin Garnett, he's checked in for Gorgie Dang. Now, here's Rubio. No scoring yet from him, but that's likely to change. Griffin with the steal. And it's Johnson penetrating. And stolen by Wiggins. Here's Martin. That's in, coming off an assist from Rubio. Martin's got the lead up to four now for Minnesota. And now we'll get a perspective here on how the hustle game has been going for the Timberwolves. They've come out in attack mode on the defensive end. They've applied pressure and forcing turnovers. You know, another factor in their offense so far has been their ability to convert and score off turnovers. Minnesota with the ball. They're on a 17-7 run. Here's Towns. Rebound by Aldrich. The Clippers have gone 6-12 in the second quarter, right at the 50% mark from the field. Stevenson, that's in, and he found his range with that one. Now one for two. 124 left to play in the first half. Now Rubio. Wiggins dishes to Towns. Rebound by the Clippers. Not too much congestion in the lane. I think he could have gotten a better shot that time. No question. Johnson kicks to Paul. And he gets the friendly spin, and that one drops. Paul's got nine. And that's definitely a shot that he has in his arsenal. Paul against Rubio. With the shot. The rebound by Johnson. Well, I think the defense got lucky right there. I mean, he's going to make a lot more of those than he misses when he's got that much room. Garnett with the block. Wiggins against Paul. Leaps for it and taken away by Paul. About three seconds between shot and game clock. Stevenson kicks to Aldrich. To the middle, stolen by Martin. And now Minnesota on the fast break. A three-pointer, Wiggins. Second chance shot. And it's going to be two free throws. Drew contact on the shot. The Timberwolves shooting their third and fourth free throw attempts of the game. And they've had really good numbers all season from the free throw line. One of the things they've done, guys, is taken pride in their free throw shooting this season. And rightfully so. 
All right, now, gentlemen, two shots. Blue shot. A free throw good from Kevin Garnett. And both free throws good from Garnett. Nine seconds left in the first half. Paul passes to Stevenson. Fires from the wing. And that one comes up a bit short. The shot's there for him, and he's got to take it. I don't care if he doesn't convert. That's a shot he has to continue to take. So the clock runs out with the score tied going into halftime. And now we'll send it down to Doris Burke, who's standing by courtside. Josh, what do you need to do in the second half as a team to come away with this win tonight? First five minutes is going to be big for us. We got to go out with the same intensity and energy that we did in the second quarter. We have to withstand it for two more quarters and hopefully come out with a win. Josh, thanks for the time. Good luck in the second half. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Doris. And folks, don't go away after the break. We'll see you right back here for the start of the second half in the third quarter. And now, the 2K Sports Halftime Show. And an exhilarating first half, to be sure. Welcome back. I'm Ernie Johnson alongside Kenny the Jet Smith and Shaquille O'Neal. We'll be breaking down all the action for you. This game, folks, a close one at Staples Center. And taking a look at the Clippers, Kenny, what did you see out there? Well, the reserves really came through when they needed a spark. This is a close game. Any points you can get from your bench are huge. I thought the bench guys came in and inserted themselves like they wanted a starting spot. And that's what you want. Subs who are ready to produce the moment they step on the floor. How about you, Shaq? What did you think about Minnesota? Well, I thought the one bright spot was the effort on the glass. Several times when momentum was sliding, getting a timely rebound really lifted them. The strong work on the glass is key because that's how you string together a series of big stops. All right, and that'll do it for us here. We now take you back to the second half of our game. Kevin Harlan ready with the call. And it's been a back and forth game so far with no ground given through the first half. Third quarter starting here now. We've seen Kevin Martin getting it done. 12 points. And he's hit the mark twice from three-point range as well. And Clark, it's no stretch to say the more points he gives them from beyond the arc, <laughs> the better off they'll be. Timberwolves shooting in this game, 45%. Yes, fans, Clark, and the one team they view as floppers is the Clippers. <laughs> I don't like that word, but it just kind of came out. Whether that is fair or not is up for debate, but... It is certainly, I think, the perception. And I think there's some truth to that perception. I mean, multiple players have received fines for flopping on their roster. I mean, you can't run away from that. And the fans remember it, oh, too. Oh, they do. Yes, sir. So on the floor for Minnesota, Levine is out there with Miller. Then it's Garnett. Then there's Pekovic. And it's Muhammad in at the small forward. And for the Clippers and floppy, part of it might just be reputation. Whenever anyone hits the deck on their team, fans might be quick to kind of condemn that as a flop. Now here's Paul. Outside Jordan. Good, and Paul gets the assist. Paul's got his ninth assist in the game now. Moving it around, eight of their last ten coming off assists. And Greg, you know nothing makes a coach happier than selflessness on the basketball court. Griffin with the steal. Dishes it to Pierce. Reddick is in the corner. Plenty of room to knock down the shot. Reddick's got seven points in the game. You know, the Clippers were the darlings of the NBA as they improved and made strides, but I think the flopping has kind of diminished that now, that love affair. Being labeled a group of floppers can certainly stifle your popularity. 
And guys, for Nikola Pekovic, NBA scouts said he, he needed work on his shot coming in, yet he's money from mid-range at times, especially at the charity stripe. One of the best free-throw shooting bigs we shoot have two. in our league. Shooting two. And that one falls for Nikola Pekovic. And back to Pekovic at the free throw line. Clark, he has consistently been around 75% for his career. And Kevin, last season he got that number up to 84%. And he also gives you really good effort in the paint on both ends of the floor. Minnesota making a switch here. Jones has checked in. And so Pekovic nails both of them. And last season, an injury-filled one for Nikola Pekovic. Played only 31 games before he was sidelined. Clark with an Achilles injury. Yeah, and you know, he wasn't even playing quite up to par before the injury, Kevin. After shooting well over 50% in each of his first four seasons, he dropped to under 43% last year. Okay, time now for an injury report. Now let's get an update on Blake Griffin's injury. And Doris, what do you have? Well, guys, I had a moment to catch up with the head athletic trainer for Los Angeles. He told me that it doesn't look too serious. That is going to make things very hard on them in what is still a very young season. Hopefully, as early as it is, he has time to recover and help this team down the road. Guys? All right, Doris. We will, of course, keep everyone updated as we find out more. And you know what? He could have a long road ahead in terms of getting back on the court. But one thing we all know, he's never been shy of hard work. No, he's not. I mean, he'll be doing everything he can to make it back as soon as possible. And on the subject of Pekovic, last season was another difficult step back for him physically. At some point, one wonders if his whole career becomes in jeopardy. It just takes so much effort to keep coming back. I think they need to get much more disruptive defensively. They can't just keep allowing these easy baskets. That's got to be job number one right now. Nothing easy on the inside. And the Clippers call time here. And guys, I for one can relate to what Pekovic is going through. I mean, it's not easy as a big man to get those injuries to your legs. I mean, you're carrying a lot of weight and force around. I mean, let's hope Nikola finds a little more luck going forward as far as the injuries. Well, I tell you guys, when you look at this Wolves team, I mean, the outlook is really bright. A lot of young talent um, that's fitting together nicely. Um, good skill set. I think this group could be one to watch and really good going forward. And I think Doris Burke has something for us right now. Doris? Kevin, Doc Rivers was just addressing the plan with his team. The focus of the discussion was getting their offense to run through Pierce. Coach is calling on him to play a big role in the offense for the rest of this game, to really be one of the key guys for them down the stretch. Those could prove to be crucial changes to their strategy with this game getting ready to enter the stretch drive, Kevin. Thank you, Doris. So for the Timberwolves last year, Greg kind of uh, traded into the top overall pick, getting the Wiggins deal, which means two consecutive yeah. years of having number one. Uh, they're beginning to put together the ingredients. I, I think they have a core to ultimately be formidable when you talk about that Western Conference. And to pick up Zach Levine in that same draft, that was a nice selection as well. And, and don't discount what Flip Saunders brings to the table in terms of coaching and teaching these young players. Here's Paul after the made shot from Carl Anthony Towns. And Pierce, here we go. And again, it's the Clippers missing. And whether he's a great off-balance shooter or not, the, the lean is probably not the best option on that shot. Wow, the floor just really opened up for him on that possession. Yeah, I mean, I'm all for good offense, but that was just a terrible reaction from the defense. Third quarter action and just under three and a half minutes have gone. Guys, they're looking for a spark here. Yeah, I mean, a cold stretch offensively. They desperately need a basket. And it's good. Pop through contact. It's the shot. He'll go to the free throw line. And, and that's his style right now. That's his game. He plays it as well as anyone. And when we get to crunch time, that's when he's at his best. Jang, he's checked in for Kevin Garnett. Los Angeles shooting their first free throw this game. Yeah, not really where you'd like to be as a team in terms of free throw shooting. Just about 
and comparing to the numbers of last season, they've made a bit of improvement. So that's some positive momentum they can look to build on. Now, here's Rubio. He's been patient so far, nothing yet on the scoreboard. And that's another assist for a team that is putting on a clinic on how to share the ball. And I love the mentality that they've had. If a shot isn't there, they're not forcing it. They're moving it side to side until they finally get the one they want. Reddick against Martin. Jordan sets the pick for Reddick. It's rebounded by Towns. Towns has got rebound number seven for him tonight. To the inside. And for Gorgie Jang, an intelligent guy with strong physical attributes, gigantic arm span, but extremely raw skill wise. Yeah, yeah, his game still needs plenty of polish uh, on both ends of the floor. But I really felt like he took a huge leap last season, and he has the intensity along with that work ethic to continue to grow. Shooting two, shooting two. And the first one at the line is good. So for the Clippers, Smith checked in for Griffin. Johnson comes in for Pierce. And Lance Stevenson subbed in for Paul. And Jang drops them both. They got to keep fighting their way to the line, guys. This half, it's been nothing but success for them there. Yeah, taking full advantage from the charity stripe. They've yet to miss here in the second. Johnson, a wide-open look. That ball, nice feed that time from Stevenson. Johnson's got himself going there, his first points of the game on the deep ball. You know, on the topic of Zhang, he did improve in practically every category in year two. Offensively, though, he still looked a bit mechanical. And on defense, he still went for too many head fakes, but you've got to like his upside. Stolen by Mark. Here's Rubio. Out of bounds, the Clippers take possession. And before you now are the rookies on a roll, the hottest shooters in the last 10 games. Carl Anthony Towns, fourth. Clippers trail by five. It's Reddick on the wing. Andrew Wiggins grabs the board. And talking about Gorgie Jang, he recorded 22 points and 21 rebounds in a game his rookie season. Amazingly, it was the first ever 2020 game by a Timberwolves rookie. The Wolves, of course, wants home to Kevin Garnett and Kevin Love, so that's, uh, that's pretty good company. And here's Stevenson, following the three-pointer by Andrew Wiggins. Smith on the wing. All sorts of time. Rebounded by the Timberwolves. Towns has got rebound number eight now on the night. And then they continue to control the glass. Guys, I think they've simply been the more physical team, and that's why they're ahead. Wiggins with it. Now guarded by Stevenson. Wiggins dishes to Jang. Out of bounds, the Clippers take possession. Now a moment to see the stats for Wiggins. How's the last month of basketball been for him? Averaging 15 points a game, four rebounds, and two assists. And just look at those scoring totals. He's been doing what he does best, putting points on the board. Absolutely. I mean, he has those real natural scoring instincts. The ability to find creases in the defense, just um, fantastic. Cole Aldrich, he's checked in for Jordan. Man, he's having quite the quarter converting at a really high percentage. It's now been a decade since the Minnesota Timberwolves played postseason basketball. Last trip to the postseason for the Wolves back in 2004. Wow, that was a yeah. long time ago. <laughs> and if you're wondering, that is the longest playoff drought in the league currently. Wolves want nothing more than to get back to playing playoff basketball and featuring the number one pick in last year's draft will help. Good way to start, you're right. Here's Smith following the score by Kevin Martin. The shot by Reddick, no good. One made three for him for the game. Does he focus closer in? Let's see. And Rubio kicks to Martin. Wiggins left side. Jang with the screen for Wiggins. Too long in the paint, and he's hit with a three-second violation. And, you know, even though the Wolves have been out of the playoffs so long, you get the sense 
it won't be too much longer. They've got a really nice core to build around and I think could be special especially Andrew Wiggins. One shot. One shot. And that one misses. And as you mentioned, the, the Wolves could be back in the playoffs in due time. They are headed in the right direction. Some mistakes have been made along the way, but you have to like their future now. And now it's a double-digit lead. And it's a 10-point Timberwolves lead. They're straying away from the three-point game here in the second half. And um, that's fine as long as they're on the lead and they're getting good shots. They've decided not to take nearly as many three-pointers in this half. Now here's Reddit. He's got 11. Jang with the ball. He dishes it to Rubio. And out of bounds as the Clippers gain possession. And that's just carelessness there. I mean, you have got to have your head in the game. The Timberwolves making a switch here. Pekovic has checked in. Clippers trail by 10. And Reddick kicks to Aldrich. Stevenson against Martin. The dish to Smith. And a foul called on the shot. Got him on the way up that time, so he'll shoot two right here. Wow, wow, he got whacked on that one. Shouldn't be much debate there. Blatant contact. Straightforward call. Simple. The Clippers shooting their second and third free throws tonight. At the line for two. First one falls for him. By Alitza. He's checked in for Minnesota. Smith hits them both. And here's Rubio. Still getting warmed up offensively. No buckets yet in the game for him. Pekovic with a screen. Rubio against Redick. Six to shoot. There's the three. And another three for Minnesota. And here's Stevenson for three, and he gets it to go. Stevenson's got five now. Yeah, gutsy shot to come right back at him with a three of his own. Well, we've seen it before. He doesn't have any problem trading shots with anybody. The fourth quarter just moments away now as we welcome you back. Clippers trail by eight. Inside, it's Griffin and Jordan. Chris Paul is out there with Lance Stevenson, and it's Pierce in at the three. That's who's out there for the Clippers. Now here's Paul. Jordan the screen. Griffin a screen on Rubio. Five on the clock. Stevenson drives in. The shot misses. And, and, and really credit their advantage on the backboard. That's where the lead has been built. And that's why they are in control. Greg, simply controlling the glass. I mean, plus 10 is the advantage in rebounds right now. And it's good. And this has been purely a display of offense that we're seeing here today. And, you know, it's only getting better as both of these teams' defenses are starting to show signs of wearing down. Now here's Pierce. Andrew Wiggins pulls it in. Just over a minute played here in the fourth. 
Rubio the pass to Martin. Here's Payne, and there's the whistle. That goes on Adrian Payne. That is his first foul of the game. Oh, great defense there. Anticipated the play and got there first. And not afraid to put his body on the line either, Greg. He took a shot for the team in that situation. Jang, he's checked in for Payne. Clippers trail by eight. Paul kicks to Griffin. Pick by Griffin. Jordan with it. Now guarded by Pekovic. And a big pounce off the rim, but it sinks right in. And that's 12 points for Jordan. Timberwolves leading by six. And the Timberwolves call time here. DeAndre Jordan has been extremely productive over seven years. That makes it even more unbelievable that there was some question, Clark, as to his commitment to basketball coming into the league. Yeah, you know, on talent and athleticism alone, he would have been a top 10 pick for sure. But he slipped to the second round, and he's made good on it, though. And watching DeAndre Jordan, he's really refined his game over the years without losing the athleticism. He's that rubbery, long-limbed athlete that transcends age. And so far, I've seen zero drop-off in his leaping ability and quickness. But no question, he's improved his skills and IQ. A moment to check in with Doris Burke. Doris? Hi, Kevin. Flip Saunders was just going over the plan with his team. He gave his guys the green light to keep firing from downtown, telling them, listen, I like the work you're doing out there. Keep finding those gaps on the perimeter. They're giving us open shots. And talking about DeAndre Jordan, he is displaying an energy level that many scouts wondered if he had. Let's face it, he underachieved a bit in his one year in college. He knows that. But when it's come time to do it at the highest level, DeAndre has risen to the occasion. And what do you guys think so far about the offensive approach for the Timberwolves? And I like how they've taken the high percentage shot in the paint. In that first half, we saw them doing it, and they've continued to succeed as the game has worn on. Well, it's been a super performance from beyond the arc, too. I mean, they've been reining in those threes. That's also good. So he hits both free throws. You know, you work hard all season, Greg, to try and get into the playoffs, then get a favorable first-round matchup. How about the Clippers last year? Followed those steps. The reward, reward with the first-round matchup against the defending champions of the league, the San Antonio Spurs. And not only were the Spurs the defending champions, but they came in playing terrific basketball down the stretch, which is kind of what they are noted for. And the Clippers, though, did well even though that was the case. Here's Dang following the basket by DeAndre Jordan. That's good. Six points for Garnett. That's how to orchestrate for your teammate. Terrific pass. Paul kicks to Pierce. He scores his fifth field goal. He's taken nine shots to get those five. Timberwolves leading by six. Third minute of action now gone here in the fourth. Jang can't get it to go. Jordan with some nice D. Outside Pierce. Shot from 12. Garnett grabs the board. Garnett's got his fourth rebound in this one. And this quarter, he has clearly been off the mark. And the ball travels out of bounds. It was last touched by Wiggins. Towns, he's checked in for the Timberwolves. Muhammad comes in for Wiggins. Clippers trail by six. Stevenson outside. A bit under three and a half minutes have passed here in the fourth. Pierce inside the three-point line. Again, Pierce missing. Minnesota's gone 6 of 14 with the three ball tonight. Just a little over 40%. Towns dishes to Muhammad. Garnett in the post. Guarded by Jordan. Clock at four. 
three-pointer, Martin. It's good for his eighth consecutive basket in only eight tries. Wow. <laughs> and when he's got that much of a height advantage on the perimeter, it's really tough on the defender. Easy three-pointer. Jordan, the pass to Paul. Here's the lob to the hoop. And then Griffin with the dunk. Really hard to decide, guys, which was better. The pass, the catch, or the slam. Clark, there's no wrong answer to that one, my friend. <laughs> Sensational alley-oop all the way around. Agreed. And, guys, Agreed. you know what? You wouldn't know that they're the team that's actually trailing with how they were able to pull that play off. Yeah, great look, but disappointing with a miss. Boy, what happened on that one, Greg? I mean, that's almost an automatic shot for him. Minnesota leading by seven. Rubio outside. And the three off target. Los Angeles has gotten off to an 0 for 2 start from downtown here in the fourth quarter. Towns with the steal. Takes it into the teeth of the D and converts the way up. And the Timberwolves lead by nine. Clippers have gone 5 of 11 from the field in the fourth quarter. Paul with the ball. Guarded now by Rubio. And Griffin with the score. The assist by Paul. Six points for Blake Griffin. Minnesota's gotten the three-point shot off 16 times tonight. Seven times they've hit it. Nine times they've missed. And two free throws coming up as he misses that one. Drawing the whistle and a lot of contact there. I mean, even from over here, you can see that one pretty clearly. No question about it, Greg. I mean, a ton of contact and a good call by the officials. No good on the free throw. J.J. Reddick's checked in for Lance Stevenson. Andrew Wiggins checked in for the Timberwolves. He's off on the second. Clippers trail by seven. Griffin, no one around him. Again, the Clippers. I, I love that plan. Set up the opportunity for the mismatch. Yeah, knowing they have to get a bucket here and exploiting the height advantage where they can find it, well, that's a no-brainer to me. And that one's good. Wigan. A, a, a tough first half, but it's been a different story here since the break. Pass to Griffin. Here's for three. Minnesota with the rebound. Garnett's got his fifth rebound in this one. Wiggins drives in. Again, Wiggins missing. Well, there was no hand in his face right there. I thought for sure he was going to knock that down. Here's Griffin. And so he draws the foul on the shot. A trip to the line to shoot two. Some good play from Griffin in this one. He's got eight points and some big-time defense with the three steals, too. Two shots. All right, now, take a break. Take a break. Two shots. First free throw is good, and that trims the lead to six. That one falls, so he hits both of them. Those free throws edge them a little closer. A couple of stops on defense, and they might not be down for long. Minnesota calls timeout. They're in front by five. 136 left in the fourth quarter. 
you know, I think he just wants to tinker with the game plan a, a little bit, and I think that's a wise timeout. And part of it, too, Greg, was he saw some things going on out there that he didn't care for. Bayalitsa, he's checked in for Kevin Garnett. Martin kicks to Rubio. Can't get it to go. Paul with the defensive effort. They get that one, but guys, on the night, that's been the problem, securing the ball. They've been out hustling. At this point, hard to see them recovering from that. Count And he'll have a chance for a three-point play. That one is on top. Big-time basket there on the inside. I mean, he had to get that one up and over the big guy. Way up and over the big guy. And what a time in the ball game to make it happen. Paul having a good one. He has 14 points, and the assist number's tremendous. His court vision is on par with anybody. I mean, he could not pass the ball any better than he is right now. Boy, they came out of the locker room at halftime with a much more physical disposition than they had in the first half. And that helps, Clark. They've gotten extra trips to the foul line, and they need that to continue if they're going to get back in this game. Man, that's, it's close, but, you know, didn't get on balance quick enough. Yeah, and as quick as players are at this level, in this day and age, I mean, you've got to be perfect in your anticipation to draw the charge. So the whistle blows on the shot with two free throws for the contact right there. the first one and that makes it a three-point lead and he hits both free throws here so now it's a four-point ball game that was a critical trip to the strike they have a two-possession lead now. Los Angeles calls timeout. They're losing by four. 106 left in the fourth quarter. And the Timberwolves making a change here. Pekovic has checked in. Here's Paul. And it goes as the official calls the foul. Count it. We'll shoot one more at the free throw line. Unbelievable basket. I mean, I've given up a lot of height there, but he was not to be denied. Not when the game's hanging in the balance. That makes it a little different. He was going to get to the rim no matter who was standing in the way on that one. Free throw good. Paul. No problem for him there. You just know what the result's going to be when he steps to the line in a tight game like this. 54 seconds left in the fourth quarter of this one. And Rubio kicks to Towns. And so it looks like the Timberwolves will retain possession here. Yeah, that's a super defensive play. If that gets through, no doubt they score. And that's why he sold out for it, because he knew he had to make that play. He wasn't going to let them get the advantage. Now here's Pekovic, five to shoot. To take the lead. 
Rebound, Minnesota. They've led by as many as 11 points. We can probably expect to see them slow it down now. Yeah, you got the lead. Burn some clock here. Smart move. Yeah. They don't get any bigger than that basket. They needed it, Greg, and he gave it to them. Los Angeles calls timeout. They're behind by three. We've got 22 seconds left in the fourth. Guys, what's your take? And, and you know what? you got a couple options here. You can take the three to tie it or get the quick two and then a foul. And, you know, if it opens up for them inside, the quick two would be the way I would lean, Greg. But the foul has to come immediately after that. We've got 22 seconds left in the fourth quarter of this one. Outside, Pierce. Griffin kicks to Paul. Pekovic with the rebound. And there's the call on DeAndre Jordan. And so he's picked up his final foul. And he will sit for the rest of this game. He had to foul and on that occasion to stop the clock. That's the enemy in this situation. And you know what, Greg? Who knows? A few misses at the strike. <laughs> And they're right there within range. You know, late game free throws are a lot different than early game free throws in terms of making. Good on the first, and that gives them a four point cushion. So he gets them both, and it's a five-point game. No mistakes there. I think you can close the book on this one, guys. It's done. Los Angeles calls timeout. They trail by five. Nine seconds left in the fourth quarter. Guys, your thoughts? And you know what? And they're going to draw up something where they can get a quick shot and then maybe a foul. That's got to be the game plan here. I mean, free throws are really... Their only hope points with the clock stop. Nine seconds left in the fourth quarter. It's Pierce on the wing. Money! And now an intentional foul. They need the ball back as soon as possible. You have to foul, but I'm sure they would have liked to foul someone different. Yeah, but Greg, they didn't really have a, another option. I mean, I thought they did a nice job getting it in his hands and making sure he was the guy who'd go to the line. the first and that gives them a four-point cushion the second one is good Getting both at the line and it's a five-point game Paul no good and so the Timberwolves take the win. A narrow win under difficult circumstances, Greg, as the visiting team. It really was, but that didn't seem to bother them. I mean, road team, home team, all I know is they were the better team. Well said. Well, folks, that's going to do it for now. This is Kevin Harlan saying thank you for tuning in. And this broadcast has not ended just yet, as we've got the award-winning Ernie Johnson standing by here for the postgame show. The 2K Sports postgame show. And hello again, everybody. Ernie Johnson with Shaquille O'Neal and Kenny the Jet Smith. Let us take a moment now to recognize our Jordan player of the game. He led the way tonight with a double-double and was a major reason why they won tonight. His effort and intensity gave them the boost they needed. Boom, boom, boom. That's right, Ernie. Instruments. This guy was instrumental tonight in making sure they avoided a second straight loss. They needed somebody to step up tonight, and he was their guy. 
He gave them a big spark with his offense in the paint. He worked non-stop to establish position near the bucket, and that was a good look for them. The D had all sorts of problems trying to deal with him tonight. And that'll do it for tonight. For Kenny Smith, Shaquille O'Neal, Kevin Harlan, and our illustrious 2K Sports crew, this is Ernie Johnson. Have a good night, everybody.